gene drives are, are uh, ways that edit a gene editor can be used to spread a genetic trait through a population quickly. And a research lab in California was recently able to use this kind of strategy to spread a trait through a population of fruit flies in a laboratory setting uh, very quickly. And, and I think what, what amazed uh, many people, many scientists, was that was how efficient this was at creating a, effectively a, a new strain of fruit flies that had a different, different genetic trait in every uh, individual. I think that uh, you know this the, this uh, you know potential to use that kind of, um, of of spreading of a genetic trait is is both exciting in terms of controlling vectors that can spread disease, but it also uh, makes a lot of people nervous because of the potential to spread a trait that might become uh, something that would be uh, deleterious somehow in the environment. So, for example, imagine that uh, it were possible to spread a trait that um, that uh, wiped out mosquitoes, um, or, or uh, you know, created a created a population of, of insects that were somehow damaging in the environment. I think that those are those are uh, applications of this technology that are very important to discuss and to think about before we sort of forge ahead and release animals like that into the environment. So for, for, for people that have uh, seen Jurassic Park, or if you have kids like me, you've seen it many times, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a really interesting idea, sort of this was Michael Crichton's idea in the, in the book and then in the movie to think about being able to take bits and pieces of DNA that come from extinct animals and somehow piece them back together, perhaps using sequences of DNA from existing animals to create genomes that would allow, uh, you know, once extinct animals to, to be alive again. And, um, you know, could that really be done? And, and I think that, you know, the, the CRISPR technology offers scientists a tool now where, at least in principle, maybe not to the level of, of was uh, in, in the film Jurassic Park, but, but uh, you know, in, in principle could allow introduction of new genes into existing genomes that would recreate animals that have traits that have been lost by extinction. And so, you know, a number of scientists have been thinking about this. I think George Church is one of the, one of the prominent scientists uh, who's been discussing this in the context of the extinction of woolly mammoths, you know. Could you actually uh, take DNA that's been sequenced from the remains of woolly mammoths and use elephant DNA to recreate these animals somehow. And, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of a fascinating idea. Now, whether that would actually work, I think there's a lot of technical challenges to, to doing that experiment, but could we do things like uh, bringing back the carrier pigeon or, you know, animals that might have been, have gone extinct uh, very recently and where we could, we have close genetic relatives that we could actually uh, study. I think it's a, you know, to me it's a, it's an interesting, idea because of the potential for understanding genetic networks and the you know what 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 genes are, are really doing how they how they really give rise to certain traits I mean I think that one thing to appreciate is that in most cases the traits that we observe in in animals or in ourselves are coming from interactions of many many genes it's not just one gene that gives rise to you know somebody's height or intelligence or anything else it's it's really a, a whole network of genes that are interacting and to start to understand that i think would be very exciting and potentially could be done using this kind of strategy of introducing uh, genes from extinct animals back into existing animals and um, it's hard to say, you know, how soon that will be a reality, but I, I think the, the potential to learn a lot about the genetics of, of, of living systems is exciting. I think with any new technology, you know, the, the people get excited and uh, they, they see opportunities not only for doing uh, research in the case of, of this kind of science, but also for commercial use and to make a profit. And, uh, in, in the case of, of gene drive, you know, this is, this is a tool that could really enable the creation of organisms that might be uh, commercially valuable. And yet, one could also say, well, you know, the, there needs to be close supervision of that, close regulation of release of animals or organisms like that that are engineered in, in such a fashion. 
And uh, I think, you know, with any new technology, one always has to try to get the balance right. On the one hand, we, of course, want to see technologies and, and science in general being used to solve real world problems, uh, real human problems. But on the other hand, we want to ensure that that progress is responsible progress, that we are working together with uh, stakeholders to ensure that, the, that uh, there's not an unintended or even a, a negative intended consequence of, of the use of these technologies. How to do that is a big challenge.